Hello everyone, welcome to Business Central Launch Event. In today's presentation, we would like to present what's new in Business Central integration with Dataverse. My name is Sandy Binarko and my uh, colleagues Ivan Kolatic, we are both a uh, product manager for Business Central. In the agenda today, we'll first review the Dataverse integration with Business Central, and then my um, uh, colleague Ivan will uh, talk about what's new in DataSync, and then uh, it's my turn to talk about what's new in virtual tables and what's new in business event. So without further ado, let's review uh, Dataverse integration. So as you know already, uh, Dataverse is a data storage and management layer for business application built on Power Platform that includes Dynamics 365 sales, marketing, field service, and customer service. Business Central is not built on Dataverse, but we have extensive fabrics or tools to integrate with other first and third party business application running on Dataverse, essentially promoting better together scenario through wider and deeper interaction between Business Central on those apps. Extensive I mean we cover all types of app and system interaction between Business Central and those uh, Dataverse apps, such as data sync or synchronization, virtual table or virtualization, uh, data cut event, data change, update or delete events, or change notification, and finally business event, which is action notification. Better together mean business central and those Dataverse app can be integrated in such a way that they can enhance each other, essentially living up to the proverbial um, um, uh, expression one plus one equals three. And the way to do that is to do a wider and deeper integration, uh, taking advantage of the breadth and depth of those complementary interactions so they become more and more sticky uh, one from the other. All right, so let's go uh, quickly uh, on the four complementary interaction between Business Central and Dataverse. The first one is Data Sync that replicates data changes when data is created, updated, or deleted between overlapping tables in Business Central and Dataverse. The second one is virtual tables that enable inbound interaction from Dataverse into Business Central using a Business Central uh, crude API, but without duplicating data. The third interaction is data cut events. This enables the, um, the reverse direction, which is the outbound interaction from Business Central to notify other Dataverse apps that there are some changes uh, in Business Central, some data changes. For example, it can actually uh, start a power automate flow using the when a row is added, modified, or deleted trigger. And the final interaction is business event that also enable outbound interaction uh, from Business Central to notify that some action are performed on Business Central so other apps uh, in Dataverse can react. This can also start a power automate flows using the when an action is performed trigger. So next, I would like to pass it to my um, colleague um, uh, Ivan to talk about what's new in DataSync. Wow, these were some really great diagrams and I really love you know, looking at the bigger picture before diving into details. So today, I'll take you through some of the improvements that we've done in data sync and sort of around it, right? So we'll talk about linking uh, Business Central and Dataverse environments. We'll talk about how you can add uh, additional table and field mappings. And we'll talk a bit about the new thing that we added. We talk about uh, synthetic relations. So the first topic that I want to talk to you today about is uh, using linked uh, environments in Dataverse integration. So why is this important? This is important mainly because businesses want to keep their data safe and secure and without a pr within a specific privacy uh, boundary. Admins now have a way of ensuring that that specific business central uh, environment can be linked only with a specific uh, Dataverse environment. It also, one of the sort of the side effects of that is that it actually ensures even a bit less friction because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to choose the environment you want to connect uh, anymore if the linked environment exists. 
Another addition that we've added in here is we've added a capability to add uh, table mappings to existing integration tables. That has been a recurring request from uh, our partners and our customers. And right now what you can do is you can simply uh, go and define new tables uh, that you want to map. You define the key synchronization parameters such as, uh, such as direction and filters. And after that, you can also define uh, configuration templates that are going to be applied in either of the directions when data comes in Business Central or when the data comes in uh, Dataverse. As well as with uh, table mappings, you can also now add uh, field mappings to these new, uh, newly created integration table mappings or to the existing integration table mappings. You define that uh, also by specifying uh, the, the parameters for each of the fields, such as uh, transformation rules, validation rules, and when they need to be uh, applied. There are few things that uh, we need to note uh, in here. For the table integration mappings, uh, what you will notice is that uh, you can't actually uh, remap or duplicate existing uh, integration table uh, mappings because these are defined uh, in code and we don't want the, the custom ones to actually interfere with, with the existing uh, table mappings. Uh, the similar things, uh, th similar things applies to uh, field mappings. With additional, uh, with additional sort of constraint in here, we do support uh, most of the simple data types uh, in the mappings, but you will still need a, a developer assistance in case you want to do some, uh, uh, some uh, mapping of, of, of lookup peel fields or you want to introduce some additional logic that needs to be executed when the get data gets transferred one way or the other. There are a few other things that uh, I thought it was uh, sort of uh, good to know and good to uh, share uh, with our community in here. There are some uh, few smaller or minor improvements that were also added to the data uh, synchronization bit of integrating with Dataverse. Uh, one of the things that we've added is, as you can see on the picture, you now have a troubleshooting fact box, which enables admins to quickly identify and, and mitigate the issues uh, that might have been uh, that might have happened uh, during the synchronization, rather than sifting through the log, long, long uh, synchronization log and going on different places. Right now, when you go to table uh, integration table mappings, you can on the on the level of a specific uh, integration table mapping inspect the integration errors and uh, couple data synchronization errors. Uh, one of the other things that we've made to make uh, the integrations uh, a bit more robust, the operations of copying the company and copying the environment now actually do a proper cleanup uh, of synchronization. So it, you don't get into situations where uh, your data might uh, sort of uh, erroneously show that it has been coupled uh, after you've copied the company or that you get the, the synchronization errors from the source company that you copied and, and so on. And the last but not least important thing in, uh, in these small things that are good to know is that we have actually renamed uh, some of our uh, connection uh, setup pages. Uh, so uh, we used to have Dynamics, uh, we used to have Dataverse connection setup and Dynamics, uh, Dynamics 365 connection setup. So the Dataverse connection setup stayed the Dataverse connection setup, but the Dynamics 365 actually got renamed to Dynamics 365 sales integration setup. Now that we also have the integration to field service, which is also named like that, but. If you use Tell Me, you will still be able to uh, you will still be able to find those pages uh, the way uh, you are used to finding them. And the last thing that I want to uh, say in here is that we have actually enabled the use of synthetic uh, relationships uh, from Business Central. And why is that important? You know, and Sandy actually said there are sort of you know in general two ways of how you can actually uh, move the data. You can either synchronize data, meaning you will transfer the data, and you can use the virtualization way of 
of uh, exposing business central data without transferring the data, right? And since we do have a set of uh, APIs that can actually be exposed as virtual tables in, in Dataverse, and we know which data we are syncing, it makes sense to uh, basically, rather than go and customize and add to the, uh, to the, to the set of data that gets synchronized, uh, rather than doing that and spending uh, developer time on that, you can now actually use uh, the existing APIs to sort of supplement uh, that data that has been, uh, that has been synced. In, in, this, uh, in this particular uh, capability, you can simply pick uh, the tables that are being synced, you can pick the virtual table, link them using a couple of fields uh, that uh, you specified and as you are guided through the uh, new synthetic relationship assisted setup guide. And that uh, takes us to the demo. So in Business Central, we'll get to a Dataverse connection setup where in the integration action group, you can open integration table mapping. There's this new capability where you can actually add new table mapping. We will call it work, uh, work type to pay type, as I want to link the Business Central work type with the pay type in, in field service, for example. Uh, what I will do in here, I will pick a table, work type. This is a business central table. And I will pick an integration table, it's called pay, field service resource pay type. Uh, I need to pick the, the fields that uniquely identify the Dataverse, uh, the Dataverse record, and I also need to set the field that is used by the sync engine to um, figure out whether that data has been modified or, uh, or not. I can choose in here to sync only coupled records. I will sync everything in here. And under Advanced tab, uh, if I click the Advanced button in here, I can actually specify additional filters by creating a, uh, uh, creating a filter. For these tables, these are very simple tables. I don't need any, any filters in either of these directions. And I can also uh, specify the, the configuration templates code, uh, code for when the data comes in Business Central and the integration table configuration template code when the data uh, comes in Dataverse if I want to supplement it uh, with something. Now that we have uh, the tables uh, and the integration table mapping uh, setting done, I can actually go ahead and proceed to uh, field mappings and in here, I will simply put, I want the code to go to the field that is called, I think it's called name, for example. And in here, I can, let's say, apply a title case transformation. And let's say, I just want to validate uh, this field. Clicking next, we'll go ahead and uh, create a in new integration table mapping. It will also create uh, the field mappings. Uh, the thing with the, with, the, with the field mappings is that the field mappings are by default going to be in, uh, um, inserted as disabled. So in order, so the moment when this gets created and the job, for example, uh, if, if you have been adding fields to an existing integration table mapping, there could be a job that is already running. So we wanted to provide you with a bit more control over um, when you actually uh, go and enable these new things that you added in here. And of course, after I click finish, there's also a, uh, the, 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 the guide actually creates a synchronization job queue that is going to run uh, the, the synchronization. Okay, now we have the new integration table mapping in here. What you will see, these actually get a flag as a user-defined mappings. And you can actually check the fields. Oh. What did I select? That was the first one. Let's select the correct one. If you select the fields, here are the fields uh, that are done. And what I can do uh, from now on, I can simply go ahead and synchronize modified records after I have some records that are coupled or simply run the full synchronization for this to initiate, uh, to initiate the synchronization. Mapping, synchronization. Yes, we want to run it. And 
and and that's uh, and that's it for this part of the demo. So in the next demo, uh, I will show you how to actually go and uh, set up a uh, synthetic relations. Uh, I have uh, I have Dynamics 365 for sales integration enabled in here, and I've created some sales orders. And what I want to do in here is uh, I want to. Uh, also add uh, shipments to those sales orders that I have uh, that I'm already syncing. First thing that I need to do is check out uh, whether a uh, sales shipment uh, virtual table has been enabled. It has. And now I go to uh, synthetic relations where I will create a new synthetic relation between a uh, sales order um, uh, sales order table uh, or entity in uh, Dataverse and a uh, sales shipment uh, virtual table. If I click the advanced, uh, you will see uh, there's a, a virtual table uh, API page that is used to list the fields that I can uh, pick. And I will map uh, those uh, two tables by business central order number. And the other table actually has uh, order, order number as well. OK. Now when I click next, if there's a key already present, a uh, relationship just gets created. Uh, I can see that the relationship has been added. Now, if I go and switch back, uh, have a look at the, uh, my sales orders, right? Uh, I will, uh, this is one uh, sales order that I have uh, actually already sent from uh, Dynamics 365 uh, for sales to Business Central and I will post some, uh, some quantity just to create a shipment record in here, let's say three, and let's go and uh, post the shipment. And after the shipment is posted, you can see I already posted one before when I was preparing a demo, and there's a second one uh, that was created uh, in here. If I now go and switch to Dynamics 365 for sales, look at that sales order that I have transferred uh, to, to Business Central. The moment I created that synthetic relations, I now see and I now have this new sales shipments tab. Clicking at, uh, and you can see there are two shipments in there. If I uh, click in, in that one, since I have the sales shipment lines also enabled, it automatically actually shows the sales shipment lines for that table. And that's how easy it is actually to uh, uh, create a synthetic relation and use it uh, in, your, uh, in your production environments. And what you saw that, I'm just a product manager, so I didn't do any coding this time around, so that makes me really happy. <laughs> and with that, let me hand you off to uh, to Sandy, and I feel like that this you know synthetic relations thing was a perfect cue for what you want to talk about next. So take it away, Sandy. Uh, thanks, Ivan. Uh, in this part of the presentation, I would like to show what's new in virtual tables. So if you remember, we have entered general availability for virtual table in the last release, which is uh, 23 wave two. And at the same time, we also enter public preview for power pages on the virtual tables that also happen in the same release, 20, uh, 23 wave 2 release, right? So now I would like to show you what's new in 24 wave 1 release for virtual tables. We don't have uh, many features, but we have these small features that actually have been in high demand by many partners and ISV who wants to build virtual tables to support different companies in Business Central. As you remember, um, there is no company concept in Dataverse, so we actually have to support uh, um, uh, a way for power, page, uh, power apps and power pages to target different company. So in the demo later, I will show several steps. The first step is to show you the standard global company settings that will be used by the virtual table plugin uh, for all users and all apps and portals. So that means uh, when the global company setting is set, all users and all app will have the same company, right? And then uh, we also have, um, since the beginning, a user-specific company setting that can be used by the virtual table pl uh, plugin to override the global company setting for all apps and portal. So that means for each user, it they can use um, uh, one company, and this company that uh, they target will be used for all apps and portal 
uh, that they built or that they use, right? So what if they, uh, the same user want to use different apps and different Power, uh, power Pages portal, but uh, targeting different company? And this is where the new feature uh, come into play. So we introduced uh, with this release a data versus shared BC company ID execution variable that will be used by the virtual table plugin to override both the global and user specific company settings. And I will show you how to build a custom data versus mapping plugin and mapping table to set this BC company ID shared variable for any combination of user, apps, or portal. So before we go to demo, let me show you how this uh, um, mapping plugin and table works, right? In the standard um, uh, Power Apps that try to access a business center of virtual tables, uh, the, the app, in this case, in this picture is, for example, app one, it will use Dataverse Crude API to target um, um, uh, business center of virtual tables in Dataverse. And then the virtual table plugin will translate that Dataverse CRUD API into Business Central CRUD API and uh, will use, uh, will target the Business Central company that has been configured with the standard global and user specific company settings. Now, now you can actually create a mapping plugin and table. So the mapping pack plugin can be created to intercept any Power Apps or any Power Pages portal accessing selected Business Central uh, table. So for example, I can actually create a mapping plugin to intercept any request for Dataverse uh, uh, CRUD API that access Business Central sales invoice virtual table using the read API, which is a retrieve or retrieve multiple in Dataverse world, right? And then, um, then you can also create a mapping table where we can actually put the records that map any combination of users, apps, and Power Pages portal to their respective business central company. So the way it works is, for example, in the second picture, when app two, when user two and app two have a mapping table record that targets company two, when it actually requests to access a um, um, uh, uh, sales invoice table, right? The mapping plugin will actually intercept that request and will set the shared BC company ID variable to company two, such that when the when the virtual table plugin uh, picked up, it will use the shared BC company ID variables set to company two to translate Dataverse CRUD API into Business Central CRUD API, overriding the global and user specific company settings. So now you know how uh, the mapping plugin and mapping table, um, how it works. How do you actually create, register, and create the, uh, and um, uh, fill up, fill the, the, the mapping table content, right? So there are, the, there are documentation in Dataverse, which is like a Dataverse plugins and a registered Dataverse plugin documentation, right? You will see that um, in that documentation, you can actually use the plugin registration tool where you can, you can actually um, uh, submit a step where uh, your plugin, for example, in this, uh, my example is, a, I call it the company mapping plugin, that will actually trigger whenever Dataverse retrieve or retrieve multiple um, uh, requests is uh, uh, is access is used to access a sales invoice business central virtual table. So you know that whenever uh, you want to access the sales invoice virtual table, either single row or multiple row, the plugin will be uh, triggered. But when the plug plugin is a uh, mapping plugin triggered, you want to know when actually um, it, um, it should actually uh, uh, triggered, right? So you have to pick the right execution stage. So in this case, uh, we pick the pre-validation stage such that it always, uh, it does its operation before the actual operation done by the Business Central CRUD API, right? And then in the mapping table, you can create an entry that match your um, uh, user and apps. So in this case, um, in a Power App, you can go to the advanced settings. You can see, uh, you can use the unique name. In this case, this is a prefix, uh, CR7B3 sales invoice app. It's the name that you want to use to in the mapping table. And then in the mapping table, you can create an entry. In this case, 
CR7 B3 sales invoice app, and uh, whenever the user is mode administrator, you want to always use Kronos USA. So you can actually make any combination of user and, uh, and power app and use many different, um, uh, many different companies. All right. And finally, I just show you a quick uh, screenshot of this, uh, the code of the mapping plugin. It's very, very simple. Uh, this will be published after the uh, launch event. So you can essentially cut and paste it and modify it, right? The yellow part that I highlighted is actually the part of the code that will deal with Power Apps. And then uh, in a different demo, I will show you the part of the code that will deal with, uh, with Power Pages. So in the, in the part that will deal with Power Apps, when a Power App is uh, launched and it try to access a sales invoice virtual table, this plugin will be triggered and it will grab the app the app name and then try to find the app name uh, to find uh, it try to find a match in the mapping table if there is any record with the app name if it find a match then it'll look at the value of the of the company ID in that match record and use that company ID to update the value of the uh, shared variable which is the BC company ID when it's done then uh, the mapping plugin will pass the operation to the uh, virtual table plugin and the virtual table plugin will use Use that BC company ID to override uh, the global and user specific company settings. All right, let's let's do a demo. All right, uh, in this demo, I will first show you two different company in Business Central. So I will show you the different sales order and sales invoices of this company, so you can see that um, uh, the mapping plugin and ma mapping table that uh, we built can actually target different companies later. So the first company is the, the default Kronos USA. You can see the sales order for uh, Kronos USA. There's a bunch of them. And then you can also see the sales invoices. There's a bunch of them also, right? Now I'm gonna switch company and you will see that the sales order uh, for this new company is actually has less, uh, uh, less uh, entries and also the sales invoice has less entries. Let me switch to my company. So this one. And now you can see the invoices of the my company will have less uh, entries. Yeah, there's only two, right? And then the sales order also have only one, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you see? All right, so now I'm going to the BC configuration app um, in here, which is actually comes with the virtual table uh, plugin installation. And I will show you the default global setting uh, for company. In here, the global setting for, um, uh, for this environment for all BC is a Kronos USA, right? And uh, I have actually uh, created a sales order app that actually show the sales order. And you can see here, the sales order that it shows is actually all the sales order of the Kronos USA company, right? And you can see the user that used to log into this app is mod administrator. So now, now I'm gonna change the user specific setting for mod administrator user, okay? So here you go to the user entry, uh, the user table in Dataverse and pick the mod administrator and find the company default uh, to default on forms. And here I wanna set my company, okay? And then save. So now, when it's finished with save, this uh, setup of uh, my company in the user specific company setting will override the Kronos USA in the global setting. You can see here if I refresh, it will actually show the sales order for my company. You see, there's only one sales order, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a mapping table that can actually be used to overwrite also the user specific setting for any combination of user and apps. So in here, I have a mapping table which I called app name company mappings, right? And in the first entry is essentially, I'm saying that um, the app name is a CR7 B3 sales invoice wipe. And for the user mode administrator, when these two combinations is being um, launched uh, in the Power Apps, you always target Kronos USA, all right? So uh, to get this, the, the name of the app, you can actually go to the editing of the sales invoice app, you can look at the settings, 
and then select advanced settings and you can see the name of the app, right? So let's see the sales invoice app itself. So right now, if you, uh, in the sales invoice app, I have a company setting that's set to Cronus USA. So the sales invoice will show all the sales invoice of a Cronus USA, right? Now I can actually change the company setting to my company. So if I switch that, go to my company, all right, I'm, I'm saving. So if I, if I go back to the sales invoice, it will only show the sales invoice of my company. And you can see a, there are fewer uh, sales invoice, right? So and if you go back to the table, you can see the table uh, has been uh, updated. Before it was Cronus USA, now if I refresh, it should show that the uh, mod administrator user and the sales invoice app is targeting my company. You see? All right, and that concludes the demo for uh, virtual tables. Now, in this part of the presentation, I would like to talk about what's new in Business Event. If you remember, uh, Business Event was uh, uh, released in public preview for about two releases ago, 23rd Wave 1 release. And what's new in this release in 24 Wave 1 is actually a new UI pages for troubleshooting Business Events. And also, we add more information in the custom dimension for partner telemetry. In the demo later, I will show the following. I will first show uh, the four complementary interaction for Dataverse integration that enrich one of the app running in Dataverse. Uh, in this case, is Dynamics 365 Sales. And uh, we will enrich this, uh, uh, this uh, Dynamic 365 sales with business central data and information, right? And I will show a power automate flows that triggered by data cut, uh, change update, uh, create update and delete, and also business event that will push uh, business central information into Dynamic 365 sales. And then uh, I will show the UI pages showing the successfully subscribe and send business event. And finally, I will show the Parnell te telemetry showing the successfully also subscribe um, and send business events. All right, let's go to the demo. So in this demo, I'm showing you a Dynamics 365 sales hub. In here, you can see a familiar account called Adatum Corporation, which is actually a business central customer that has been synchronized into Dataverse. So the data in here is actually coming from Business Central. So it's using data sync, right? And then below that um, information, you can see there are two subgrid, which is called Business Central Sales Orders and Business Central Sales Credit Memo. Those, da those data are actually virtual tables. So we're actually showing a virtual table enriching um, uh, the account in Dataverse, right? And the way you do that is you're using a syntactic relation. In here you can see there are two syntactic relations that relates a native account in Dataverse with sales credit memo virtual tables in Business Central, as well as a native account in Dataverse with a sales order virtual table in, um, in Business Central. You can see here, you see native and virtual table. All right, so another thing that I would like to show you is this part in, um, in the account form in Dataverse where you can actually uh, push information regarding that account. So we will actually use uh, data cut events and business event to enrich the notes section or the timeline section of this uh, Adatum Corporation. You can see in the past I have actually uh, send a data cut event to let uh, users know that there's a sales order created in Business Central, and then I send a business event to show that the, uh, the sales order has changed status into release, right? And finally, I send another business event to show that the sales order has been posted. So I will do that demo now. Oh, before that, I'll, I will actually show you the Power Automate flows that enable us to do this. You can see here in Power Automate, I have three flows. One is called uh, Sales Order Created Notification, Sales Order Release Notification, and finally Sales Invoice Posted Notification, right? 
all of them are the same. Essentially, it will um, it'll be triggered for the, for the sales order created, it'll be triggered when there's a, a change in the data, when a row is added, right? You can hear here when there's a new sales order in Business Central, this flow will be uh, triggered. And when it's triggered, we'll get the row by, um, the ID, uh, the row by ID, and then we use that row by ID to find out which account row are related to that uh, sales order. And then we use the, the name of the, the company to find out uh, which account um, a form to push information into. So the, um, the flow is exactly the same. Let me get back. So the flow for sales order created is the same with this flow for sales order release or sales invoice posted. And you can see um, the same flow except the different trigger. Uh, the other one is for um, uh, data change uh, notification trigger, while this one is for with uh, action perform trigger that used for business event, for example. And here you can see you actually want to be triggered when the sales invoice is posted in, uh, in uh, Business Central. So let's do that. Let's create a new, um, let's create a new sales order. And this, I'm gonna target a datum. It's a Paris gas chairs. Sorry. In quantity. But so a new sales order has been created. You see here, open, right? Sales order 101027. And we should be able actually seeing here, if you refresh the timeline, there should be a information push into the uh, Datum Corporation account. You see there's a new sales order been created. Now I'm gonna trigger a business event by releasing the sales order. I'm gonna release it. It's released, all right? If you, look at, if you look at the Power Automate flow, sales order release, there should be an, uh, an event being triggered and just six seconds ago it succeeded. So now the, the timeline should also be updated. If I refresh, there will be a change in the status of sales order. Yep, you see? So the sales order 101027 is now released. Now I'm gonna invoice it. Post, okay. So it become uh, posted sales invoice 103321. And if you go back to the Power Automate flow, let's see if the sales invoice posted notification has been triggered. Yep, it's been triggered, right? Then that means the uh, the account form in dynamic sales should be updated with the sales invoice posted uh, information. There you go, sales invoice has been posted. Now all this event, not only push to the dynamic um, 365 sales, but we can also uh, troubleshoot uh, from the uh, UI pages. You can see here, there's a page, uh, a new page, which is called business event subscription. Here you can see that um, I have multiple events that I have subscribed, right? Yes, you see sales invoice post, posted uh, version one, customer unblock version one, all different version, right? And then like if you look at the, for example, customer unblock, you can see the activity log for that subscription. For example, in here, the subscription was, has been created um, a while back and then there are three different uh, notification being sent. So let's go back to the sales order release and see if the, the event that's being um, triggered is actually also um, uh, registered here. Notification. Yeah, this is the last one on the 13th of March. Is a, there's no retry because it's successful and it's been sent. And the same thing for sales invoice posted, you can see the the notification has also been triggered just now. And then um, now uh, those events are also pushed into Partner Telemetry in App Insight. 
uh, we are, I have set up uh, my app inside in this environment. You can see the, the telemetry um, uh, string uh, that I can add into the Business Central Admin Center. Once I do that, I can go to Azure and look at the partner telemetry and uh, do um, a query. Like in here, for example, for that, that uh, event, uh, customer blocked event that I subscribed before, you can see there's a custom dimension and all the new information has been added. The production, the, you can see, then the name of the event, the version, right? Now, if I wanna see what event has been generated recently, I can change the query. There are two business events that has been sent today. First one is, um, uh, is sales order release. You can see here, sales order release version one, targeting Cronus USA, right? And the second one, the final one is all sales invoice posted. You can see here. First in one, it's also targeting uh, Coronas USA. And with that, uh, we conclude the demo for, um, for this session. And I hope you enjoy our uh, presentation and I look forward um, to meet you uh, in person in the Q&A session. Thank you.